Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Well, after a short hiatus there, um, last week we were away on a little bit of a fishing trip, testing out a bunch of these coronamids and dry flies that we were tying. And uh, boy, we got into some really, really nice fish. Um, pattern that I'm about to share with you today is one of those patterns that really put the hurt on them. Um, we stood out in amongst the pile. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just show you quickly what we were doing. And uh, it was funny, we kind of, we ran into a bunch of uh, Friday Night Flies fans. There's, uh, there's what we're catching. That's about seven or eight pound rainbow trout. And there was heaps of them in this little lake that we were, ca we were fishing up in the uh, caribou. So we also ran into some uh, huge Friday Night Flies fans. Um, I, their names are, they're not with me at this moment, but uh, the two young fellows were from Chilliwack and uh, I made sure that they swore to secrecy on this lake. <laughs> they were pretty excited to see me. They knew they were in a good fishing hole when they saw my truck roll up. Um, that's our camp. I brought my camper and as you can see in behind the blue tarp there, there's an outdoor shower. Uh, the mosquitoes were really bad, so uh, we were doing real quick showers, so it was uh, pretty sparing on the, uh, the hot water. Um, and uh, this is my fishing partner that I fished with. Uh, he, we always joke about it. Uh, his name is Steve, and uh, he's known me since I was skinny. That's his uh, saying, so pretty funny. We were out. Uh, this is another lake that we we're fishing. Um, and we were just kind of bombing around the lake, setting up anchors and chucking chronomids and blobs and whatever else we were throwing at them. And uh, we had a really good time. There's, there's a typical fish from the weekend. And uh, they're, they're monsters. They were absolute monsters. But so anyhow, today, um, since we're back up here at camera three, um, I'm just going to go straight to it here. So now you guys know why I wasn't here last week and we didn't announce the winner. But uh, if we only got one guy, I'm not going to announce a winner as far as I'm concerned. I want to see a little bit more participation from our, uh, our crowd. So what we'll do is we'll, um, let's do another contest this week. We'll do a chronomid contest again. It seems like a lot of people really wanted to do chronomids. And uh, they're relatively easy to tie. This one here is an anti-static bag. Um, there's a few different variations that I've found that work really well. Um, I'm tying this one's a size 12. Um, this variation was actually pretty deadly too where we were fishing. Um, this is a size 10. And just slight little tweaks. Um, as you can see here, this one's got a gray collar. I also like to tie them in blue done as well on the underbody and on the collar. And then this collar right here is um, burnt orange, I believe, or rusty brown. So we'll do a, or actually no, that one is actually uh, burnt orange as well. So when you hit burnt orange with the solar res, it actually makes it a little bit darker. But what we're gonna do, let's get at it. Let's get at it and tie some flies. So what we're gonna tie with today is a Daiichi, a 1760 in a size 10, just for camera purposes. I highly recommend that you tie them in 10s, 12s, 14s, and 16s if you're fishing with chronomids and do a few slight variations as you can see like uh, a blue dun collar or a gray collar and do them in uh, the rusty brown. It definitely makes a huge difference and um, when you get into the bigger patterns, like the bigger hooks like the size 10s, make sure that you're putting fairly long lungs and gills on them, or lungs on them. And today we're using uni stretch for our lungs. And we're just gonna get everything. My, I wasn't really prepared to tie this week. Um, I thought it was Thursday, to be honest with you. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. And all this COVID stuff, we've had some, uh, some really nice weather the last few days. And I've been out chasing fish with my wife and family and kids and it's been uh, it's been nice to get out of the house and enjoy a little bit of the great outdoors anyhow all i'm doing is just put a little bit of thread up on the hook here and then we're going to throw this uni stretch up in front on top 
and then throw a quick half hitch or a quick finish in behind. So yeah, we've been really enjoying it. I've got some other photos, but you can only do so much in the way of photos when you're doing live television here. And we'll just flip that bead back up and over. And then so when you're doing your longs, you'll find that like with size 10 hooks, you're gonna to wanna to leave it fairly long. So I always recommend leaving it fairly long with these big buggy buggers. And uh, you'll notice once the uh, that UV stretch gets wet, it shrinks up to next to nothing. So when you're doing chromies, I'm gonna just go back up here to the top camera and we'll just explain where we're getting at it. You buy online, you can buy these big anti-static bags pretty well anywhere, uh, computer stores, Amazon, and then all you do is get yourself a real nice sharp exacto knife and a straight edge like a ruler and you cut yourself a bunch of thin strips and you throw them back in a bag and you leave them there for when you're ready and do like a ton of them so that you only have to do that once in a blue moon and you can see once you've cut them down you get these nice little strips of wholesome goodness and the bag is still attached at the ends so you just cut those little tags off the ends and then you've got two perfect strips and that'll tie a few flies okay so once you got that done um, what I've noticed is that with these anti-static bag chronomids is the clearer that you can make them like if you look you can almost see right through these guys and to do that um, I found gray thread or the blue dun or actually white makes it really shiny too. Um, and I believe the shinier the better when it comes to these anti-static bags. Um, as chronomids make their way up to the surface, they start to gather air. And I think that's the trick, is the more air that they gather, the shinier they get, and fish really start to hone in on them. So, what we're going to be tying this with is... Uh, which wire have I got here? This is medium, I think. Yeah, it's a medium black wire. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, there you go. Nice and clear. And I always tie this off on the side and then work your way back into the taper. So, and overlapping. So one thing you'll notice with, um, with the anti-static bag is that it really starts to take up space. So if you try to build a perfect taper right off the hop, you're going to get a real thick fly unless you're cutting your your anti-static bag really really thin so you can see where i've gone to just as it starts to get into the dip of the fly or the bend of the hook and then what i'm going to do is grab a chunk of that anti-static bag and as you can see i've got quite a bit of it all over my desk right now because when you got a good pattern you better make sure you got lots of it tied up in your box Justin said at the six ought that's a bit too thick of thread. Um, well, it just happens to be what I've got right now. So yeah, you can run an eight ought, you can run seventy or one forty denier. Um, I just find that uh, when I'm when I'm making chromies and when I'm making the anti-static bag, I'm not going back and forth as many times as most people will, just because I usually use the uh, anti-static bag to make my contour and then fill it in with. Uh, solar as you'll see here shortly so what i'm doing is just cutting a small taper at the tip of the anti-static bag and what you're going to do is just tie it in at the tip right at the back here nice and tight and then just overlapping work your way back up as you can see i came really close to breaking my thread on the tip of that hook that's not something you're going to want to do so overlapping you want to make sure that you're filling in all those gaps on the way back up and you can get crazy creative with your contours now but you'll find that uh, the anti-static bag is going to give you enough contour and if the fish are coming in looking at it that closely usually that's going to mean that you got a bit of a tweak or bend in your rod so be ready 
Anyhow, we're gonna throw this over on the bottom cradle. Start with the anti static bag, nice tight wraps, and work your way up the shank. As I'm getting older, I'm finding it a little bit more difficult to see this stuff, so I would have had a little bit more light on it, but with the camera and light that I've got right now, um, if I get the light too close to the fly, it starts to make it almost glow on camera. So what you're going to want to do is lock that one in tight to that. A couple wraps in behind. Cut off your static bag. Give it a quick whip finish in behind. And then what we're going to do is walk that to the, walk that rib back up top. So you can see it's got a nice taper. There's a little bit of fuzz from when I uh, almost broke my uh, thread there. So I'll just cut a little bit of that loose, loosey goosey off the back. And now that I got a quick whip finish, I'll put that back up on the bobbin cradle. And we're going to walk this, this rib back up top. And what they say is just space it out a little bit as you're going. Just like so. Nice and even, a little bit fatter as you get to the head. Whew, man, I'm having trouble seeing that. But it's looking mighty fine on camera, I'll tell you that much. So, you want to lock that thread down. As we say on Friday Night Flies, lock her down. I have a pair of junker scissors for cutting your wire, especially when you start getting into the heavier stuff. So, couple different variations real simple variations are you can do this with a copper brown copper brown wire looks really good on these you can also do them in red red wire and then start messing around with your collar like I said earlier a rusty brown collar looks dynamite on these guys so we'll finish this with finish off Make a little bit of a gray collar on it, and then obviously we're going to get over to the solar res booth here and uh, make this fly come to life. But this has become one of my go-to chronomid patterns, and if you don't have these in your fly box, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. The anti-static bag has been a huge producer for the fish finder and our whole guiding team. Um, if you've chronomid fished long enough, you'll find that there's a real common saying when it comes to chronomid fishing. The first is always the hardest, and there's truth to that, because you don't know what they're eating right off the hop. But I'll tell you something, this is one of those patterns that we throw out pretty well each and every time, first go around. And the reason for that is, is that pretty well every time you do a stomach pump, you're going to see these guys in their gullet and that's the darn truth so you can pretty well guarantee that you're going to see these guys every time you pump so give this a quick uv finish and then while we're doing this i'm stocking my chronomid box <laughs> it's a two for one tonight baby so what i'm going to do i typically don't do the size tens that often but when you get into size 10 chronomid fishing and they're eating that, boy, I tell you, it's fun. You'll see fish swimming through the water looking for them. And um, maybe while we've got time here, I'm going uh, to hammer out a quick variation of this same one that we just did here. Um, we're going to do a size 10 with a white bead. And uh, we'll do the rusty brown collar on that one. And then you guys can go from there. And then I've got a, I want to do a quick uh, red butt as well, but we'll do it in another video. Red butts, we also call them here on Friday Night Flies, we call them baboon butts because of our nice colorful red butts. Um, you got to get creative naming. Um, keep in mind that some lakes are barbless and if they're not, you don't necessarily need the pinch of barbs. But it is easier if you plan on catching and releasing anyhow. I always suggest people to uh, 
to do it without without the barbs if you can. So anyhow, with the white bead, I'm going to throw the white thread in behind, and instead of doing uh, the, the gray now, we'll just see if you can if you notice a difference here. And this one, black, working our way back on the rib. And once you get a few of these down, it's pretty quick. And like Justin noticed, here I'm actually using, I think, three on thread. And I'll tell you one thing. Most fish are not going to notice that you're using 6 odd, 8 odd, 3 odd, 2 odd, whatever thread it is. Because by the time they come in and look at that, it's usually too damn late. And as you see, the heavier threads allows you to do them quicker. There's a nice taper to this. And if you wanted to get a little more creative, you, I could have probably got a little heavier to the, the hook itself. Um, and now what we're going to do is tie in another chunk of anti-static bag so we're going to take it and cut our contour at the tip this one tapers real quick so and these scissors are starting to get a little on both sides because there's so much freaking wire okay so same thing overlapping you'll notice that the white almost goes translucent makes it look like you can see right through the entire body of this thing once this static bag is over top so this one i'm just going to put a little bit of a heavier contour to the head quick lip finish wrap that static bag up that's the beauty of these um, chronomans is that they're really quick to tie yet they they yield fish insane same thing, we're holding that static bag somewhat tight, nice and snug. Looks like you're wrapping mirror on a hook. And now we're going to go back over to this bobbin. Lock it in there, nice and tight. A couple wraps in front, one behind. Lock it down, cut it off. And what I'm going to do here is get a little creative with this guy since I don't have to spend the time to cut gills and lungs or whatever you want to call them. I'm going to spend a little time getting creative. So I'm going to cut that guy off. I'm going to swap over here quick and we're going to go to the rusty brown to give it a little bit of a different color. You'll see it make it look really sweet. A two for one show here, guys and gals. Back over on the bottom cradle. It's looking nice and clear so far. Not too, not too blurry. Okay, we're gonna take this. Size 10, so it's a big fly. Big crawny, so we're not gonna get them too tight. And I say they, I think they say seven wraps is usually the going the going cause so i think i don't know i didn't count them one two three four five six seven on the button tie enough of them it just comes naturally <laughs> oh boy i think a good yes -er. so get that guy in there and the difference of just Thread on the collar can make a huge difference to a fish, I'll tell you that, because I've seen it. I've seen it where they won't touch the gray, and all they want is this rusty brown collar. So, at this point, you know, work your way up, make a little bit of a smooth transition on the collar right up to the bead, and that's nicely locked down. And we're going to take our scissors, cut it nice and short, and then finish it off with our favorite stuff, Solarez Bone Dry. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Between those two that I just tied, that comes with a fish catch guarantee. In most of the lakes in southwestern British Columbia. That's a bold statement. That's how confident I am in this.
this pattern between this one and doing the nickel, the black nickel gun metal. It is dynamite, one might say. So you can see the difference with the underbody with the white. It makes it almost translucent, like you can see right through it. And that is typically the color I like to put under is that white. But also, if you've got blue done, the blue done is deadly. So go out to the local sports shops. One of my favorites is Fud Valley Sporting Goods at 1380 Birch in Pemberton, Birch Street, Birch Drive. And they'll have a good selection of thread there for you. There should be some beads and some hooks, a little everything. So there's the two there. Um, and I'll just put those two on the hook. You can have a look. Pretty sexy. And then I've got one tied in a, that's a 12. With the, um, that's got the uh, rusty brown, the copper brown rib. And you can see the difference. Just a little hint of some different color in there. Anyhow, that will be that show for today. And uh, I'm going to do a quick uh, blend on a different one. So we'll do, um, I'm going to do a, a what are we going to do? A, a red, red butt. butt or a, what do they call them? A baboon butt? <laughs> Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in Friday Night Flies. Uh, for the full recipes, go over to our website at FridayNightFlies.com. And my lovely wife is in the background. Maybe we'll get her to come up here on the next show and she can show you how good looking she is and how, how lucky of a man I am. Anyhow, we're going to sign out with that. Enjoy the rest of the show. We'll be back here in about five minutes. Mm -hmm.